Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how to assemble your, your quilt. You're gonna need your background material and you're gonna put the pretty side face down. Then you need your batting. You want the batting to be centered on the background material. And you're gonna notice that there's probably about an inch to an inch and a half on each side. So make sure you got it pretty centered. Then you're gonna take your painted piece of material that you did, you're gonna center that on the batting. From there, you're gonna take one piece of the background material, pick up your painted part, slide it underneath. Now, if you have a grandma that quilts, she'll tell you you're doing it backwards or whoever, but this is a, an art quilt, so it's not the same. Pick up a straight pin, poke it all the way through to the back, Turn it, bring it up through all the pieces, poke it all the way through to the back again, and come back up. When you're done, the little pin head should be here. You'll see it through your painted part of the quilt, and you'll see it on the back. Lay it back down. We're going to do the opposite side. I'm going to lift up the background material, fold it up. Sometimes I take like my fingernail and run a crease along that. Put this on top of that. Get a straight pin. Now mine have a nice pretty yellow top to it so you can see them. Poke that pin all the way through to the background through both pieces. Now don't pick yours up, I'm just showing you. Push the top of the pin or the head back through so that it comes with the pointy side, here it is, through all the material, pointing towards the center. Poke it back through again, all the way through all the materials in the back, and then one last time, so that the point of your pin, the sharp edge, is always pointing towards the center of your painted quilt. Once you get opposite dot sides done, turn the quilt, fold up the painted part, Bring up the side again, run a crease so it stays where you want it. Bring down your painted one, take the straight pin, go through all the, so all the um, layers of the quilt, turn it back, come back up through everything, poke it through to the back again, poke it through to the center, turn the quilt. Now, I realize I'm going really fast you have to understand I've done a lot of these. Yours probably will not look as neat as this one does. Don't worry about it. Just keep doing it until it's laying down nice for you. Undo There's nothing that says you can't redo the pins as you're going along. Or if you realize that at some point you've got more material on this end than that end, take the time, take the pins out and center it again. You'll thank yourself later. When you get to the corners, you're gonna square them up, just like you were making a, uh, folding a package. So here's one, take it all the way to the edge, fold it back on itself, put the top material down so you get a nice square corner, go through the corner all the way to the back, just like we did before, pop back up, pop in, pop in, so that again, your pin that part that says, ouch, when you bump it, is pointing toward the center. You may find that you need to put additional pins in and out um, on the corners to hold them in place. Do what you need to do. Square up each corner until you have the entire quilt pinned and in place, and you will be ready to start stitching. Do that quickly. Like that. And I've got one more corner to do after this one. Again, keep in mind, mine's going to look nice and neat and square, but I have done more than I can count. I quilt a lot. At least this kind of quilting. Painted quilts. These are art quilts. They're not something you're going to cover up with on a cold day. Okay? So, my corners are done. My quilt is assembled and ready to start stitching.
All right, there we go. On to the next 